Okay, we are now recording. My name is Amy harris Houck, and I am the Head of Research Outreach and Instruction at the University Libraries. Um, the UNCG Online Learning Library in Sam Harlow um, came up with this idea for some webinars for the UNCG community on research and applications. This is the second webinar in the series, so we are super glad that you're here with us today. In this series, different librarians will cover topics on UNCG library resources and research tools. Um, they'll be recorded in Meeting Center and placed on the library webpage, which is uncg.libguides.com slash webinars, which I'm going to post in the chat. And it will also be in the email that I send you after the session is over. I'm going to go over some logistical things just real quick before I turn it over to Jenny. Please mute your audio during the presentation. I see that you all get gold stars today because you've all done that already. Um, during the Q&A part, feel free to unmute your mic if you'd like, but you can also use the chat. Um, if you have questions during the webinar, go ahead and feel free to put those in the chat. Um, I'll be keeping track of those and we'll share them with Jenny toward the end. Um, before I introduce Jenny, does anybody have any questions? Okay, so this session is Citation Management with Zotero. It's going to be presented by Jenny Dale. She's the Information Literacy Coordinator at the University Libraries, and I'm going to hand things over to her. Take it away, Jenny. Okay, thank you so much, Amy. Um, so I'm going to be talking today about Zotero, and as you can probably tell from my title slide, I'm super excited about it. That's why there is an exclamation point on there. Uh, I love Zotero. It's a great way to manage citations. We're going to get into a pretty brief overview today. Um, so I'll give you some contact information at the end so that if you want to go in more depth and learn more about it, you'll have some people to contact. But one thing that would be super useful to me right now is if you could take a quick poll for me. Um, and I have posted that into the chat area. So uh, it's Poll P O L L E V dot com slash Jenny Dale one three three. Uh, and that is just a quick poll, which again I have linked in the chat, um, that I'm hoping that you will use to tell me what browser you typically use on your computer. And that will just kind of help me figure out exactly where I want to start today. So not getting any responses yet. Let's see here. Okay. Just give people another second here. And again, that's p o l l e v dot com slash Jenny Dale one three three. All right, well, no responses there. So maybe if people could chat in for me which browser you tend to use the most. So the options I had on the poll were Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Safari. Just kind of curious to get a sense of what people typically use. Hmm, I wonder why it's not showing me any responses, but. Y'all are awesome, so you uh, let me know what's what. Let me see if I can change the way that it, oh, I do have 10 responses, it tells me. Okay, well, great. Y'all are great, thank you. So I've got seven votes for Chrome, one, two for Firefox, and one for Safari. We don't have any Internet Explorer users in here today, which is good for Zotero because Zotero does not work in Internet Explorer. So if you are a Chrome, Firefox, or Safari user, which I think is everyone here, you are in luck because uh, it works with all of those formats. So since Chrome is our most popular one, that's what I'm going to be showing you today. Um, just to give you a quick overview of what I'm going to cover, I'm going to talk about what Zotero is, how to set it up, how to import references or citations into Zotero, how to export those references and citations out, and then quickly how Zotero integrates with Word. I've got about uh, 
well, let's say 25 minutes now, um, and this is a lot to cover in 25 minutes, so it's going to be a very quick overview, but please feel free to ask questions uh, during the presentation. As Amy said, she's going to keep an eye on the chat, and uh, uh, if you have questions later, like I mentioned, I will show you uh, how to get in touch with the people who can help you. So. I'm going to stick with Chrome since it is our most popular one. It is also my personal favorite. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. And in just a second here, I am going to share my screen. So uh, Amy, if you don't see it in just a second when I start sharing, um, let me know. Okay, so hopefully you see my embarrassing desktop. It looks great. Here it is, here's Google. Wonderful, thank you. So I'm gonna head over to Zotero.org and this is uh, the interface for getting things started and set up with Zotero. And actually on this page, it gives the sort of best definition I could give for Zotero, which makes sense because they wrote it. Uh, this is a free, easy to use tool to help you collect, organize, cite, and share your research sources. So primarily you're gonna be using Zotero to keep citations together and you're going to use that to like it says here collect them so we'll look today at how we import these references particularly from library resources um, we are also going to be talking about how different ways you can organize them um, how they actually will let you cite these references and then an option you have for sharing if you do not have a Zotero account the first thing you would do would be to register so it's a very quick process Zotero is not something that you um, have just as a UNCG uh, affiliate. You can use it, anyone can use Zotero, so you don't need to use your UNCG information to sign up. You absolutely can if you'd like to, but you don't have to have a UNCG email to get this. If you prefer to use a personal Gmail account or something like that, it's completely fine to set it up with that. It just needs to be an email that you can access because once you get this set up, it's going to have you just verify and confirm from your email account. Now, I already have an account because, as you know, from my use, uh, my liberal use of exclamation points, I love Zotero. So I would, at this point, I'd be able to log in here on this screen. I want to show you what it looks like here, although uh, I will tell you that uh, it doesn't, this isn't going to be the main place where you're actually importing. So I'm logged in. You see it says, welcome Jenny Dale up here. I've got settings and inbox and all kinds of stuff here. Uh, but I can actually look at my library in here and see all the things that I will see in Zotero. Um, so if you have, you know, if you're in a situation where you don't have time to actually download the program itself, you can add references with this little plus here into, um, so if I say, okay, I'm going to add a book that maybe I just have sitting right in front of me. Uh, and I want to do this on the go, it'll kind of walk me through adding that stuff. But usually what you would do, I'm going to show you here, is actually download the, what they call the, the personal research assistant. So this big red download now button, I'm going to click on here. Um, and it is responsive to what kind of machine you're on, what kind of browser you're using, and what your operating system is. So it knows that I'm on a Windows machine here at work today, and it tells me I can download Zotero 5.0 for Windows. Now, I'm going to show you what happens here. I already have this downloaded on my computer, but um, this is one of those things that um, I am able to download on uh, a UNCG machine. I've also had this work in uh, on, like, the public computers in library and I haven't tested it out. Actually, I tested it out in the super lab, so campus labs as well. And so it gives me this security warning. Um, I'm comfortable with Zotero and this um, Corporation for Digital Scholarship, which is run through um, a university. So I'm going to click run. And it takes a, takes a minute here to extract as, as you do. And then Hopefully you can see this. It gives me this, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? And it looks like it's going to require like an administrative password. If you just click, oh, actually, if you just click no, it'll push you right through to the next thing to get things set up. So usually I would recommend the standard setup because it's really going to install everything with the most common options. And those common options are going to be the ones that tend to work best. 
Um, it's going to ask me where to put it. Again, I'm just going to kind of put it there in the same information. I'm going to cancel this right now just because I already have it set up and I, I'm not trying to tempt fate by seeing if I can do something different today. Um, but this is where you would go and actually set up your research assistant. Now, the next thing you'll need to do is install a connector. So you've got to have both of these things. I'm in Chrome. It knows that. So I'm going to click Install Chrome Connector. And what it's going to do is actually just add a little extension to Chrome. And I'm going to click Add Extension, even though I actually already have one here. This also works in Safari, and it works in Firefox. So you can see actually here it says Zotero connectors for other browsers. It explains, and also if anyone uses Opera, they have one for that as well. Um, so those are going to be your main setup pieces. You're going to download this the personal research assistant, which is also actually going to download the integration for Microsoft Word, which I'll show you a little bit later. And then you're going to want to make sure you have the connector for your specific browser. Okay, once you've got that, I am going to pull up the tarot since I already have it. Um, and I'll show you what the actual Zotero window looks like. So here is my Zotero library. Again, as you can see, I have used it quite a bit. I actually went in today and did some cleaning up of my uh, library over here on the left. Uh, but you can see here, this is like everything that I have in my library, and it's just so many things. So um, I'm going to actually, for today, just to kind of make things a little bit easier to look at, I'm going to create a new collection. and. And a collection is what we would typically call a folder in file management, but they call it collection. So I'm going to click this little folder, and I'm going to call it um, Zotero Training. And now I've got this nice brand new folder in my library over here. Um, I will also point out that I have gone through and um, created some subfolders or subcollections, which you can do as well. So. Here under uh, classes, for example, I have all of these different classes that I've demoed Zotero for, and I have those in there that I can easily access. I just put them in these subfolders here to kind of just make it easier for me to navigate around today. But you can see that you could do, like I have one for a book that I'm working on. And so my book project gets a main folder, and then each chapter, for example, has a subfolder. So if you're working on a major um, project, like an article or a dissertation or a master's paper or anything, you can always create a new collection and call it dissertation. Um, and then if you had something that was a big project like that, you might organize within that chapter one, chapter two, and so forth. Today we're going to stick with Zotero training. You'll see we're in a fresh blank page. We've got our library information in this pane over here on the left. The middle is where our sources will go, which we'll see in just a moment. And then over here on the right is once we have sources included, so let me show you under maybe my beam folder. This is where the information, if I click on a source, this is where the information for that source would be displayed. And these are all editable. So if I notice, gosh, um, they actually put the, la the wrong last name for this author. I could go in here and fix it. These are all editable document um, fields. But back to Zotero training here. One thing that I want to show you at this point is that under uh, there, there are options here under Zotero, of course, just like there are with most um, programs that you would have downloaded on your computer. Under the edit, file or under the edit menu there is a link to preferences and this is where you can set things up so that you can sync we'll talk about this so you can see here that i've already set it up to actually link to my zotero account that is what you want to do the first time you ever log in to the zotero uh, program here this personal assistant the personal research assistant you want to make sure that you go into edit preferences then click the sync so that you can link up your account. That's the way that Zotero knows 
and save your citations between computers because you can have this on basically every computer you use um, and sync the information between sessions. So let's say I do a bunch of research on this Zotero training stuff today and then uh, tomorrow I go back and do some more. I just want to make sure things are syncing so that I can actually keep all of those detailed uh, citations together. But what I'm going to do now is I want to show you how you can actually import stuff. So let me show you. Let's go to the documentation page on Zotero real quick here. And one thing I will point out back here in my Zotero um, window is that I am clicked into the collection Zotero training. And that will make sense hopefully in just a moment here. But let's say that um, I want to keep some information about, I don't know, um, how to create bibliographies within, within Zotero. And here, I'm just, I'm on a website. This is from Zotero.org. They have excellent documentation. I highly recommend using it um, if you decide that you want to give Zotero a shot. And what I would do here is up in, in Chrome, up in my uh, sort of top bar here, I've got my web address where I am. And then I also have a couple of things over here that are all Chrome extensions. So I have uh, WebEx extension and Screencastify and Evernote and all kinds of stuff on mine. But one of them is this thing that looks like a little sort of piece of paper. And that is the Save to Zotero option. So I'm going to click that. And I don't know if you can see it. It's going to happen kind of quickly. But it tells me that it was saving to Zotero training. So if I pop back over to my Zotero window, I can see that in my training folder or collection, I now have this page included. So one of the things that I would probably do at this point is I'm probably going to try to change the name here so that it's something that looks a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to say that the name I see most prominently on this page is Creating Bibliographies. So I'm going to change this title to Creating Bibliographies. And down here, because I have the whole a whole website to work with, I'm going to put Zotero as my website title. So this is the kind of thing where I can probably go in and kind of clean things up a little bit. And every time I make that change, it reflects it over here in this information in the middle bar. The other thing that it does is it actually takes a snapshot of most websites. And what that does is actually saves a literal snapshot of what this looks like today. So it's maintaining um, a record of what you looked at when you were on this page and uh, got this information. So I want to show you through library resources how this would work. And there are a couple of different ways. So let's say um, I go into the library catalog, one of my personal favorite resources, and I search for APA formatting to see what kind of books we might have on APA formatting. And here's something, uh, writing with style, APA style made easy. Who doesn't want to write with style? I'm going to click on this one. And what you may notice up here, amongst all my other extensions, is that where we had a little piece of paper before, we now have this icon that looks like a book. So I'm going to click this, and it actually saved to my Zotero training folder. I'm going to go back over there again. Information about this book. Writing with style, APA style made easy. And again, this is where I could kind of go in and make changes. So the fact that they have sort of two places listed back here on the catalog page, Australia and Belmont, California, uh, I'm going to pop back over here and I'm just going to leave the first one in there so I can fix I can take Belmont, California out. Uh, and you can see all of the information that gets imported here. Something else that I often recommend is a permalink, just because it's easier for you to get back to it. So I'm going to copy the link to this page, this permalink here, and there is a URL option for me in my right side pane here. So now I've got a website. I've got a book about writing with APA style. And I just want to show you uh, quickly from a library database. Many of our databases will integrate seamlessly like this with Zotero. So if I go to databases 
and I try a popular one like Academic Search Complete, which is a great general database, and I search for Zotero here. Uh, I can take a look at this article from Medical Writing about Zotero, a free and open source reference manager. So again, up here, I've got an icon. This one looks even a little bit different than the ones you've seen already. And I can click Save to Zotero, and it's going to save this here. It realizes that this is an article, not a book or a website, um, based probably on this document type here. And I will pop back over to Zotero, make sure it's there. It is. And I can double check all of the information that I have on here and make sure that it's correct. It has also brought in the DOI, that digital object identifier, a unique number for this particular article, and a URL to the um, permalink, which is going to be proxied through UNCG, so that if you want to go back to this later and you click on it from your Zotero library, it will actually take you to, well, in this case, it actually opens up the full text of the source, and I'll show you why that works in just a second. But if you go into it later and you want to get to this URL, you can copy this and paste this and get directly back to that article. Anytime you see this little blue button here in the attachments column, it means there's something attached. And so in our first one that we saw, that's where it attached that sort of screenshot or snapshot. Here it is actually attached to the full text of this article. So that pulled in um, information about the article as well as the full text that we could get back to. There is a storage limit with the free version of Zotero, uh, but it's a pretty decent limit. And you can, if you're working on a large project, it might be worth it to um, pay. It's, it's not very much, but you can pay a little bit of money to uh, increase the amount of storage that you have for these PDFs, because that is just handy. It's so handy to have them right there. Okay, I want to show you one more thing in terms of importing. And that is if we have, let me actually go back over to the library um, and do something here where let's say I, let me go ahead and download this article from the Journal of American History. And I'm gonna download it I'm actually going to save it to my desktop and the American history, just so I kind of remember what I called it. And now I'm going to show you with Zotero how, in some cases, it's going to look a little awkward because I have to kind of shove everything um, on, but we're going to make it work. Um, you can drag and drop. So I just dragged from my desktop, I dragged and dropped that American history.pdf. If whenever wait, basically whenever it's possible to do that, you can right click on it and then click this retrieve metadata for PDF. And it will take that PDF and pull the metadata, which is just the data about the article that's going to pull all that information that it can. And it has now created for me an entry in here. So it attached the PDF that I already pulled in to an entry that now has information um, about my article in this case. This won't work with every PDF by any means. Um, I find this like maybe half the time it works, but if you already have like 15 PDFs saved to your computer, you might as well give it a shot and see if at least some of them will import automatically. Um, this is a, a handy tool to have. So, we talked so far about getting stuff in. I just want to talk about getting stuff out. So if I've got my Zotero training folder here or collection, I can right click on that in the library and I can make all kinds of changes, right? I can change the name of it. I can say, I don't want this anymore. I can delete the collection. It will not delete the items in the collection unless you specifically ask it to delete collection and items. So if I decided I don't want this collection anymore, those four things that I imported will actually still be in my Zotero library somewhere. I'm going to quickly show you how to create a bibliography from the collection. 
Now, the integration with Word means that I don't do this very often because usually I've integrated with Word. But let's say I wanted to um, do a presentation at a conference and I'm using PowerPoint and I just want to have a quick reference list at the end of my PowerPoint. Um, I'm going to just export. You can choose citation styles here. This certainly isn't every citation style. It may not be the one that you use may not be included on this page. But you can click Manage Styles and add, they have thousands in here that you can add, and some even for some specific journals that might ask you to do things a certain way. But I'm going to stick with APA 6th edition right now. This is typically what I use. And I'm going to leave it as a bibliography, and I'm going to ask it to save as RTF. That's a rich text format. And what that does is really it makes it easy to open in any kind of Microsoft product, you can also easily copy and paste it into Google Docs, basically anything that's more of um, a document type file. So I'm going to click OK, saving it to my desktop once again. And uh, I am going to pull my desktop back over here so that you can see. Now I have Zotero training the RTF. I'm going to open it up and you can see what I've got here. This is a great way to see, oh, okay, maybe there are some mistakes. So maybe there's some stuff in here that didn't export the way I was expecting it to. Great time to figure that out and decide that you need to fix it. If you are going to fix something, I'm going to close out a word here so that I can show you um, the process of doing the integration. If you need to fix something, so let's say here um, I'm using APA, which uses sentence case. And so let's say maybe I want to take this T to uh, lowercase, fix it in Zotero. That will make it so that when you pull it into another bibliography or into another Word document, you will be able to uh, have the correct entry. So I'm actually going to do that real quick now. I'm going to roll over to Word here, not World, but Word, and show you my opening of the link document here. Since I downloaded that personal assistant in addition to the little connector, um, I have a Zotero tab in Microsoft Word. This will work with Word for Mac as well. It does not work with pages, unfortunately. So just be aware of that. I will um, mention some resources uh, in the end that kind of go through a little bit about who or what iOS or what operating systems work with Zotero. But what I'm going to do here is just show you. So let's say I'm, I'm having, I'm writing a paper. Um, in my paper, I say the term is great. I love how it works, and other people do too, because I want to be able to pull in some kind of research here in my very professional um, paper that I'm writing. So here I'm going to click Add Edit Citation in my Zotero tab. And uh, what this does is it pulls up a document preferences and says, okay, in this document, what are you using? I'm going to stick with APA 6th edition. I'm going to click OK. And now it pulls up this, oh, doing this weird thing again. Amy, Amy knows what I'm dealing with here because we found this out earlier this week. Here it is. And I'm going to search for Zotero. And I'm going to use that Journal of American History article that I really wanted to use, Digital Tools. And it pulled that in. I just searched for Zotero. I looked at all the ones that were available. And I chose Morton 2011. And it added that in there for me. Um, I'm going to use a different one. Let me pop back over here and say Zotero. OK. Um, Zotero is also free. Also free and open source. And once again, I'm going to click Add Edit Citation, and I'm going to search for Zotero. And oops, I'm going to, oh, it's, it's taking me to the one that I already used, but let's say, uh, what's that one called? This is where knowing your library is actually quite helpful for you. Um, but I'll just, I'll just search it again. Let's see, Zotero, and, Monday. Oh no, actually, okay. Zotero free and open source reference manager. There it is. Click on that. Um, you'll notice that because there was no author listed on this article, it included that. But 
I'm also going to actually say that maybe I unconsulted page 23 from this article. Maybe that specifically is from page 23. This is also where you become to suppress the author. So if in my first sentence I, or second sentence I had said, Morton loves Zotero, and so do I, then I might want to suppress Morton, the author's name. But I'm just going to add my pages, say page 23, add this here, and it has done that for me. So let's say that's all I need. It's the shortest paper in the world. So what I'm going to do is add edit bibliography. So now I've added my in-text citations. I'm going to click add edit bibliography. And what it's done now is pulled in the actual references list, bibliographic citations for the stuff that I've cited in text. Now again, this is the kind of thing where you would want to, if you need to change something, you want to change it in Zotero. So let's say um, there is some sort of big mistake with the page range. I'm going to click here and I'm going to say, oh no, this page range should have been 952 to 958. And I'm going to have that in there. should save it. I'm going to sync it real quick just to make sure everything's saving. And then over here, I'm going to click refresh. And it has refreshed my page number so that they're actually accurate. That just worked because I did it in Zotero. Now, if I tried to do it in here, I would be able to, but it wouldn't save that in the Zotero database that includes all of my citations. Something else that may have happened to you and certainly has happened to me is, you know, let's say I wrote a beautiful article and I put it in APA style because I like APA style, uh, and I get a note back from the journal and they say, actually, we use NLA. I can go to document preferences up here and I can say, okay, well, actually, we need to use the MLA 8th edition and click OK. And it changes my citations in text and bibliography to be in proper MLA 8th edition format. So, a little bit over time, but these are some of the basics of what you can do with Zotero. Basically, to uh, quote myself from earlier in my paper here, I love how it works and other people do too. So this is the tarot. It is amazing. Um, I would love to answer your questions about it. Uh, one thing I'm going to do right now, I'm going to stop sharing my monitor so that I can actually see if y'all what y'all have to say. Um, and I also will go to my last slide where I have my contact information. Um, the other thing that you could do is all of our liaison librarians, so the subject librarians for the different um, departments and programs at UNCG, are all um, trained at least to some level in Zotero. Um, so you can also contact your department librarian. So if you, let's say, uh, I don't know which departments everyone's in, but if you were in, for example, uh, education, uh, if you were in ERM, Educational Research Methodology, um, you can go to your subject guide and see that Amy Harris Hal, our gracious host, is uh, your librarian. So you can contact Amy and say, I got to get involved in this Zotero thing. It's so great. And she could help you get started with that. Does anyone have any questions? Narcissa said this is awesome, and I 100% agree. I also agree. Awesome. All right. Well, if nobody has any questions, thank you all so much for joining us today. And um, please feel free to follow up with Jenny or your librarian. Um, we are all happy to help you. So thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.